Hi, my name is Tegan Bowser. I'm here with Martha Christ today. She's representing Scott Christ. Thank you for representing him today. I do have a few questions for you, though. Absolutely. Um, how is the campaign going so far? Um, the campaign is going very well, I would say. It's been a lot. It's been a lot of, of um, interviews and questionnaires and people want information, and I think that is wonderful. I am really excited by how energized and engaged the Springfield community is in this campaign, and so I feel like it's going very well. Awesome. I love to hear that. What's an important issue that Mr. Christ doesn't think we're talking enough about? I would say that Scott uh, doesn't think we're talking enough about making sure schools are really safe and secure, uh, attracting and retaining excellent teachers and staff, and definitely the behavior issues that are happening and trying to figure out the best approach. Again, that ties back to safety, to making sure that students feel safe in their classrooms and that teachers feel safe in the classrooms as well. Um, what is something about K-12 education system that Mr. Christ has problems with? What's something he would want to change? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, I think that he would love for teachers and staff to make more money. I think teacher salaries are an issue across the state of Missouri. And I know that is something that he would love to see change. With the ESSER funds going away, there are some positions in schools that are also being eliminated because that funding is gone. And I know he would love to find ways to have those positions continue on because those community specialists have made a big impact in our schools. That is fair. I do agree with that. Uh, what does Mr. Christ think, how does Mr. Christ think the COVID-19 pandemic affected the school system? I think he would say, because we've talked about it, that the pandemic definitely affected the school system and it's not changing. It's not, it's not, I don't think there's ever going to be a back to the way we were before. So I think it definitely changed things in terms of, you know, there was a lot of divisiveness over the issue of masking. Um, he was involved in the vote for that when the decision was made in February of 2022 to make masking optional. And that was a very difficult decision, a very difficult vote. It was not a unanimous decision. And Scott really listened to what the teachers were saying. And a lot of people were saying, we have masks to take. It's really hard to make sure students are wearing masks. And they're not wearing them in the lunchroom. And they're not wearing them on the playground or whatever. And so the decision was made to make it optional. But it was a difficult decision. And I think the the scars and the pain from people on both sides of those issues are still kind of coming with us. And I think, you know, yeah, I think in some ways the idea that virtual learning is a possibility for students really came to light because it had to during the pandemic. And I think the district learned a lot about how to do that well and how, to, how it's not done well. And hopefully for students who need that virtual education, there's been a lot of learning on how to make it the best possible experience. I do love the fact that Mr. Christ is taking his time to listen to the educators and help give them a voice in this, all of this process. Thank you. Uh, what are some actions being taken to impl implement sorry, the plan that Mr. Christ created in his first uh, term? In so do you mean his own like personal platform? His big, his big strategic plan that he talks about on multiple platforms. Okay, well the strategic plan is the district, what he's talking about is the district's five-year plan. And he was a part of creating that and approving it. So it was really just making sure that they get updated at every meeting about how the plan is going, making sure that Dr. Lathan is implementing the plan with her administrators, with the principals, with the teachers, that everybody is on board, and that the strategic plan is being implemented as it was written. Um, last thing. What, is there anything else that you want the voters to know before election? Uh, the, the one thing that I always say when people ask me, you know, why Scott decided to run and what matters to him yeah. is I, I go back to the discussion we had when he first told me that he was interested in running. And it was in 2020, the fall of 2020, and some Chamber of Commerce members had come to him and said, we really think you would be great on the school board. We're going to encourage you to run. So he said, what do you think about that? 
And I am an educator. I work at OTC. I'm an instructor, and I've spent nearly 30 years in education, and so I'm passionate about it. Uh, but that is not Scott's real piece. He is uh, he's an engineer, a project manager, a manager. He has operations management experience, and budgeting experience, and long-term planning experience, and strategic planning experience. And so I said, you have a lot to offer the district in terms of your business and financial acumen. And while we need educators on the board, and I firmly believe that we do, I think we also need business people on the board because this is a big business. And so you need to have a mix of skills coming to this table. I said to him, I don't think you're qualified to make um, good decisions about curriculum. When they bring information to you, obviously weigh that out, listen, but know that the district has really great people doing those kinds of things. Where I think you can shine is in this business part of this district. And I think that he's listened to me and he does, he's learned a lot about education and his eyes have been very open. He is excited about the great things happening in Springfield Public Schools. So often we only hear the negative. There are things that need to be fixed. There are problems. The behavior issues to achievement are things that, that need to be looked at. And I don't know, there's no easy fix for that, but they need to start finding ways to try and improve it. Both of those things. But there are also great things happening in the district. It's important to remember that as well. Yes. Well, thank you for your time today, Martha. It was really nice to meet you. Thanks, Tina. Thanks for your great questions. Of course.